What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And I've got an exciting video for you guys today. I wanted to get this done yesterday. I truly did, but I couldn't. This is going to be my, uh, I don't know if I would call it a full review of Android L, but it's going to be a very good look at Android L. So maybe like an in-depth tour or something. I don't know. Anyways, let's get started. We've got our Nexus 7 2013 Wi-Fi here. I said in the video that the Nexus 7 2012 was not supported, but yeah, people asked. I said that it wiped your data like nine different times, but people still asked if it wiped your data. So I've realized that no matter how many times I say the same thing, somebody out there is going to miss it and not watch the video and still ask the question. So, so here it is. Here's Android L. I'm running this on my Nexus 5 and I'm also running it on my Nexus 7 2013. So I wanted to show you some of the things I've noticed that are different with KitKat, or I'm sorry, different with Android L than other things. So the notifications, you've got way different notifications than you had before. So you can swipe them away just like they would on your status bar. And as you can see, more of them are appearing and I can press on it and then I have to press on it again and it will take me to that specific notification, which is really cool. As you can see, like in the install video, the buttons down here are different. You've got back, home, and recent apps. The recent apps is way different than before. You can swipe the ha. Huh, you can swipe them away, or you can simply just press on this to close it out and get rid of it, which is cool. But at the same time, it's really cool when you have a lot of them. So like Zmax uploaded the video. Let's go ahead and go to that and see what he posted how to run Android apps that require root, uh, how to how to have apps that that uh, check for root that won't run for root, but you can, it, it, just watch the video to find out. But hopefully I have a lot of things open on here. I don't, it. So let's open up my Instagram here. Let's open up Twitter here. Let's open up the Play Store. Let's open up uh, Google Play Music. I use this app so much. As you can tell, it's connected to my pluggable Bluetooth speakers that I did a video on a long time ago. And I was rocking out to some TM101, TM103, and TM102 uh, inspiration. Love that, dude. It's freaking awesome. Uh, let's go to Google Plus here. Let's open up the... No, the Keep has a bunch of stuff in it. I got to get through this. All right, so... Uh, lots of quarters video. Um, so I, I trying to find other stuff that I can open the camera app. Let's open the camera app and then let's open up barcode scanner and let's open up, uh, the Bigify app uh, thing. So check this out, press the resnaps button and you're going to see a lot of stuff in here and you can just sit there and scroll through stuff and it's really really fluid and it's so cool. I really enjoy this. You can just flip through them all and get to the certain one you want. And what's really cool is like this uh, this YouTube one way back here. If I press on the YouTube thing here, it takes me to YouTube. And then I can just close stuff out like always, or I can sit there and keep tapping on the little X to close it out. So there's how the recent apps works with Android L. Really cool stuff. The one thing I'm really not happy about is the fact that we've been through Android freaking 2.1, or no, 1.5, 1.6, Okay, personally, I've used 1.5, 1, uh, 2.1, um, 2.3. I've even used Honeycomb for a little bit on my old Transformer Prime. And then they upgraded it to, I used it for like less than a day, and they upgraded it to Ice Cream Sandwich. And then 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, KitKat, and now Android L. And they still have not given you an option to hold the power button down and simply reboot your phone or your tablet. There's been so many times that I've pressed power off. I've set my phone down waiting for it to shut down. And then uh, I'll like hours later come back to it and I'll go to hit the button to turn it on. I'm like, why isn't it not turning on? Or I'll go, why didn't I get any notifications? Why have I not gotten any of my phone calls? Because I forgot to turn it back on. Now, that's my fault because I was impatient and I didn't want to sit there and wait for it to power off and then hold the button down for a few seconds to get it to power back on. I want a reboot option. 
that's why with my uh, my HTC One M8 is downstairs, but uh, I have the Google Play Edition, and I have the Exposed Framework, and I have an app called Advanced Power Menu, and it lets me hold the power button down, and it gives me an option to reboot, and then I and then I can do a soft reboot, a full reboot, reboot to recovery, or bootloader. So I wish they would give you an option to simply reboot. It's so annoying, and there's not even a confirmation. The moment you hit that power off button, it turns off. Now this is the preview beta. So this is not final. All this could change. So uh, just keep that in mind. I really hope they give us the option to reboot. So the notifications are different too on all of these. When you swipe down on the Nexus 5 here, it's the same experience on both of them. You have like the fact that I have vibrate on my Wi-Fi, the signal bars, which of course on Wi-Fi you don't have uh, cellular networks. Well, I mean, unless you have a tablet that has data, but... So it's, the notifications are different, and then you swipe down one more time to get to all of the other stuff, like your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. What's really cool is, is now you don't have to drag down your notifications, push the little button to flip it around, and then press on brightness. You just go down here, and then you have the option to do that, to change your brightness right there. So it's less steps to get to your brightness, which I'm a huge fan of. And then you can toggle your thing to turn it back on, and then if you press on this, you have little quiet hours for do not disturb. And then you can press more settings. And this is just, okay, this is actually an area I haven't even played with. So I'm not going to pretend to have done that. But uh, so dragging out with two fingers doesn't do anything anymore. I don't know if they're going to fix that. One thing I wish is that if you went all the way down, that it would show you the top there. So you pretty much have to just do it twice. After a while, I promise you will get used to it. Just swipe down twice and then cast screen to be able to cast it to your Chromecast whenever they update it and other devices that support that. You've got airplane mode, location, auto rotate. So now it will not rotate. Well, on the notification screen, that's not going to work. So let's go ahead and try it here on this screen. Okay, that's not a good example because that's not doing it. A tablet should do it. There we go, it's rotating. So if we bring this down and we go to the rotation thing here, now the rotation's locked. It will not rotate to that way. Now, one thing I'm curious about is something I haven't tried, I'm gonna try it right now on camera. If you have it on auto rotate and then you bring it down and you lock it, will it stay in this mode no matter what? Cool, so if you have it like this and you lock it, it's gonna stay like that. If you have it like this and you lock it, it's going to stay like this. That is really, really cool. Let's go ahead and unlock it. And we're done with that. Oh, kind of, sort of. Let's go to our Nexus 5 here. And let's swipe away all of our little notifications here. Now, from your lock screen, you can get to your camera really easily by simply dragging it to the left there. And it opens up the camera. And, okay, got it. So there we go. That's pretty cool. And then also... You've got access to your phone dialer. If you want to go ahead and do that, you can unlock it. Up here is your little profile thing. If you click on that, it'll show you your card. So it will show you your email address, your phone number, and etc. This will take you to your settings, which on the Nexus 7 and the Nexus 5, they look like two different, two completely different things. As you can see right there, this is more of a, like a tablet UI and this is more of a straight up and down phone UI. So that's pretty cool. One thing that I really like about Android L is on the lock screen, if it's charging, it'll say three hours left until it's done charging. Before we charge it, we're gonna go ahead and go to the settings here, and then we're gonna go to battery, and this is completely different. This says that I have one day and 15 hours left until my battery is about to die. So this screen right here looks different than before, and you click on it and it tells you what is eating up your battery. So like my screen on time isn't much. I honestly, if you follow me on Twitter, I tweeted that I didn't know where this phone was, and I went to android.com slash device manager for my computer, and I pressed the ring button, and even though my phone was on vibrate, as you saw, it started ringing at max volume, and I was able to locate it. It was underneath something, so I couldn't find it. So that's why the battery hasn't been used much on here. But it tells you right there, you don't need battery widget reborn or something else running in the background taking up your battery to tell you how much you have left. And now we're gonna find uh, get our charger here and plug it in. And I'm gonna show you what happens on the lock screen. It tells you that it's charging via AC and it does take it a minute. 
but it will tell you down here how much time it has left until it's done charging. So while it's charging up, let's go ahead and look at some more things on our Nexus 5, 7 here. And, and then we'll come back to this and hopefully it will say, you know, how much time is remaining. The app drawer is very much similar and so is the like home screen and the way things worked before. Um, whoa, why did it? Okay, why is it doing it like that? I thought it was supposed to do like this. Okay, see, when I hold down on my Nexus 5 here, it gives me the options to add wallpapers, widgets, or go to the settings here. And on this one, it's a little bit different. I'm using the same launcher on both of them, the Google Now launcher. So I could say, okay, Google. Or am I not, am I using something else? No, I'm using the Google Now launcher. Okay, I guess it's not using the Google Now launcher. What the heck is it using? <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, so that's why that happened. Let's. All right, so the Google Now launcher is installed. Let's go ahead and hit home. Okay, so yeah, it wasn't using the Google Now launcher. That's why it was a little bit different. I'm not sure why the Nexus 5 automatically used the Google Now launcher, and this didn't, but that's just weird. So next, uh, start fresh, copy icons. That's cool. Organize your space. Okay, so here's the Google Now launcher. We'll just go ahead and do always. Now if you long press on the screen, it takes you to your wallpapers, widgets, and settings. That's weird. I installed the preview via the .tgz and, and the flash all command in the command prompt, and I didn't add a launcher. That's weird. It's using a different launcher than the Nexus 5. All right, so now on this phone, it says right here that we have 17 minutes until it's full. So that's really cool. The other day, it said it was like an hour and some time remaining until it was done charging. So that's really cool. So it's not it's no longer a guessing game of how long it's going to take to charge. It tells you right there within Android. That is so stinking cool. I have a second channel, youtube.com slash www.joshdu. So it's very similar to how this one is. Uh, that's just my brand, what would Josh do? So if we go to about phone here, I showed this on my second channel. That's what I was trying to say. I get sidetracked real easily. So if we go to the Android L version, this is the, I cannot remember what it's called, but somebody on Twitter linked me to the video and I, I liked it. So if you go through my likes on YouTube, you'll be able to see it. It's this really weird thing. And the channel that it, the video links to, he has like 32,000 videos on all these different kind of things. And then if you long press on this, it'll take you to the KitKat animation. This is just a beta preview. So when Android L officially rolls out to the Nexus 5 and the Nexus 7, then it might be a little bit different and they might have a, a refreshed new one. But um, at the moment, they're just using the KitKat lock screen. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the KitKat Easter egg. Another thing that I wanna go ahead and mention real quick, uh, I showed this in the install video, but I'm gonna give you a, in better lighting and video quality. The actual like input for text is different. So like we'll go to the search thing here on YouTube and we'll search there. And then if we go to compose a new tweet, the keyboard is different. And I'm a SwiftKey kind of guy. I honestly am. I install SwiftKey on my HTC One I made. I have over 160,000 keystrokes. Um, I, I tell you what, man, I am a huge SwiftKey guy. This isn't too bad. I've been using this just because um, when I did this video, I didn't want to have a custom uh, keyboard on there. And then people are like, uh, where's the Android L one? So like today I am recording, oh, I messed up there, a video on Android L. And so just like SwiftKey, if you see something like Josh and the way you are not sure if <laughs> you you uh, get little spaces once you do once you uh, press on it. I've seen some keyboards where if you touched on the prediction, you still had to hit the space bar, which was annoying. It just wastes time. So there we go. Now I could tweet that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to just go ahead and discard that. So. Yeah, if you go through my things here, I'm telling you what, man, I really like me some Android L. I posted this Instagram photo of my uh, about phone on there, and then I posted the battery. It's, it tells you how much battery you have, like your total capacity, computed power, min, max. It's pretty cool. And then 
I also did a little screenshot of my notifications and then the bottom buttons down there. And then this one was saying that my tablet said it had three hours left before it was supposed to die. Some people were getting confused by that. All right, that's about the things that I noticed that were completely different from the recent apps buttons to the notifications, uh, the power button's different, just little bitty touches here and there, like the settings button looks quite a bit different than it did before. Just a little bitty touches here and there, mostly, and then some huge changes, like recent apps, and even, like, the dialer looks way different. Of course, this is a tablet, it doesn't have a dialer, and my dialer on here. Let me see if I can launch that without showing any buddy's personal information all right so after you press this little button right here it's going to bring you to a little thing where it's the speed dial so like you press on the person you want to talk talk to and the your most frequently contacted people are going to be on that list and it, it immediately dials that person and then there's going to be a little button that looks kind of like that one right there that's going to take you to your dialer i'm going to go ahead and do that now so now we're at the dialer and i know it's hard to see so let's do it at an angle we could do like the bank of america Oh, and this is something I want to show you. The new, it tells you that you're dialing Bank of America because of Google Now. And also, you got all kinds of different things up here. So, like you've got speakerphone, and then you've got mute, and the dialer to, uh, like, if you got to punch in your PIN number and stuff, like a pause button for hold, and then a little button right here to add people to the call. So, this is different than it is on KitKat. And I thought that was really cool when I got a call the other day and I answered it from my Nexus 5. So yeah, without making the video any longer, that's all the things that I've noticed that are completely different from KitKat on Android L. I'm really liking it. It seems very fluid. The animations run at, are supposed to run at 60 frames per second. Everything is just really, really smooth and nice. As far as the daily driver, the beta preview, uh, I haven't run into anything show-stopping. Uh, while trying to stream music on my Nexus 7, it was the, the songs were pausing every once in a while. Uh, I was did a little stupid Instagram video and it, it paused on me while I was doing the Instagram video and... That was, um, unless, if I delete it, it's this one right here. Um, I might delete it because it was a stupid video. But, uh, so, I mean, there's little bitty quirks here and there, but nothing that's going to get me to uninstall it and not use Android L. I, I, I love being on the latest version of Android. There is a way to root. Chainfire's Super SU is um, broken the time being. He is abroad, and he tweeted how to fix it. And that when he gets back, he will fix it. So CF Auto Root will work once again after he gets back to the States or back to his country or whatever. And he'll fix it. And you'll be able to root using CF Auto Root. And I have a video on how to root the Nexus 5 and the Nexus 7 using CF Auto Root. It's by far the easiest way of doing it. Um, Tile Root does not, version 3 does not work on Android L at the moment. If they update Tile Root to work with Android L Preview, then that'll be the easiest way of doing it for sure. So yeah. I just wanted to show you all the things I thought were really cool about Android L. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by leaving a rating. Letting me know whether you liked it or you didn't like it. Please subscribe if you are new to my channel. If you want to see more videos on Android L and new phones and new, like the LG G Watch. I'm going to try to order that tomorrow if they're still available. Uh, lots and lots of cool things coming very soon. So if you're not subscribed, please do so. This is what would Josh do, and I'm out. Now I'm going to get the thumbnail.